All right, it's Roy from eBikes Hawaii, and today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about some key differences between the very popular Saran product, which has hit the market in recent years and has gained a lot of traction, against the traditional e-mountain bike, which is also very popular. Both really cool products, but very different as far as the riding characteristics, the legal regulations of where you really can ride the bike, and just kind of give you a general overview if you're maybe thinking about one or the other, not sure, and just would like to learn more, this is what the video is all about. So first we'll start out with the high bike, the more traditional e-mountain bike. This is a lot more versatile on the legal front as far as where you can ride. You can ride pretty much anywhere a regular bicycle can go. Uh, bike lanes, on the streets, sidewalks, as long as it's not in a commercial area. On the trails where you can take uh, your normal mountain bike, you can ride something like this, no problem. So this here is legally the most versatile. On the other hand, we have the Saran product. And this is honestly in a little bit of a gray area. It does not have functional pedals, so you cannot register it as a bicycle here in Hawaii and it's also not registerable as a moped or a motorcycle either. So it pretty much is not legal to ride anywhere outside of riding off-road where permitted. So on the high bike, this is fully pedal assist. You have to pedal to propel the bike forward. The pedal assist is modular so you can turn down the power or turn up the power. There's an e-mountain bike mode which is variable power and again you have to pedal so if you're not moving your legs you're not going anywhere. On the Saran side this is full throttle. It's a lot closer to that of riding a dirt bike or a motorcycle. There are no pedals, there's no pedal assist. If you want to move forward you have to twist the grip and that's the only way that you're gonna be moving along on this thing. So much more like a dirt bike. The next most important standout difference would be the weight difference. So 50 pounds on the high bike feels very light and nimble. The steering, the acceleration, it's very reactive. And with uh, the speed box installed, getting you up to about 30 miles an hour, you're going quick and it, it really feels like you're moving with only 50 pounds underneath you. On the other hand, you have the Saran, which is about 80, 90 pounds and this thing also moves, it's got a lot more power, so it kind of makes up for that extra weight. But just the feeling of riding it underneath you is quite different. It's, it's heavier, you know, it's almost, can be almost twice the amount of weight. And you do feel that as you're riding along. You're putting a lot more of your, your uh, weight and you're basically just sitting straight down on this big saddle like you would a, a dirt bike. Whereas on the high bike, you're much more on the pedals, you've got your legs extended and your whole body is kind of moving as you would be if you were riding a mountain bike. Another cool thing about the e-mountain bike platform is because all of the components come from traditional mountain bikes outside of the drive system, everything is fully upgradable over time. Your suspension, the front shock, rear shock, wheel set, tires, bars, drivetrain, all of that stuff you can upgrade over time as these companies continue to innovate year after year. So you're closely bound to the mountain bike world, which is really awesome to be able to kind of ride that train alongside having the innovation of the drive system. All right, so who's it for? The Saran, the high bike, you're trying to figure out what to do. In my mind at least, if you need something that is the most versatile and you wanna use it for commuting, you can get around town, you can go off road when you want to, um, not be restricted as far as where you can ride, the e-mountain bike or any other e-bike for that matter 100% of the time. The e-mountain bike in the US has been on the market since 2010. It's been proven, um, it's not going away anytime soon and there's just a lot of different ways to enjoy this product as far as where you can ride and, and the overall freedom that it gives you. Who's the Saran for? The Saran I would recommend to someone who wants that dirt bike experience 
doesn't necessarily want to use it for commuting. They've got maybe a, a, a bike or maybe you have an e-bike too, an e-mountain uh, bike and a Saron and so you want something different. As far as riding characteristics go, it's fully electric, there's no gas, there's a lot less noise than that of a gas motor. Um, maintenance, there really isn't any other than eventually needing to replace the battery. There's no gears, you don't have to shift, so if you're used to shifting on a, a dirt bike or a motorcycle, it's just, it's all throttle and you really, it doesn't require a lot of effort to ride. There's a front brake, a rear brake, and a throttle, that's it. It's a lot lighter than a gas bike and if you gotta load it up to take it somewhere to ride, it's a lot easier to do. It weighs a lot less than gas. Power wise, it's also really impressive. It's got off the line wheelie power and as most of you probably already know, with electric motors, there's instant torque. Just like a Tesla, once you rail on that throttle, you're gone. So we hope this video was informative. Two very cool products, but also two very different products. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks for watching. And